Hey, welcome. This is Luke with Hanson's Coaching Services.com. And uh, today we're going to talk about uh, a little bit more about self assessment. We're going to get into uh, some more things about flexibility and a little bit of strength stuff as well. Uh, it all kind of just snowballs into uh, tests that we might as well all just knock out at, at the same time. Uh, so we'll talk about it at the same time. So uh, you might have seen this particular set of slides before. Uh, I have done it before. I think I might have even made uh, a video uh, podcast uh, about it as well. But this is this is updated. This is a little bit different. And uh, the thing here is we need to we need to have this discussion to lead into things about how to actually do things for flexibility and do things for strength and how do we add it into our program. You know this this really sets the stage for understanding what's going on in our own bodies, uh, why we might be getting injured, what our potential hangups might be, and really even um, what potential limiters in performances we might have. So uh, it, it is important. It is something that we've touched on before, but this is uh, getting into it a little bit more in depth, and uh, hopefully we'll add a little bit more information for you. So we'll start off just kind of talking about what we want to talk about with um, uh, functional flexibility what it means and why it's different than um, your traditional uh, high school gym class assessment of flexibility. Uh, in my mind, I'm picturing doing the sit and reach test and uh, uh, the presidential fitness test. So for general populations, but uh, we'll we'll get into a little bit more running specific type of things. Okay, so I just mentioned functional flexibility, so we should start off with with that and why. The whys and the what's about it. <clears throat> if, if you're following along, it's basically bouncing back and forth between blog posts slash uh, show notes and, and reading from the, the presentation here. So, uh, you know, so what, you know, basically what I functional flexibility is, you know, is, is are you flexible enough to do the job at hand? So, um, you know, just reading from the show notes, how many of you can touch your toes, you know, without bending your knees? Ha ha ha, jokes, jokes on me. Some of you can, folks like me are, are at about mid shin. So if I'm standing up and bending over trying to touch my toes, my hands come about uh, mid shin. And I know a lot of runners who are like that. I'm not, uh, a lot of people make a living off people inflexible like us. So, um, but does that mean that the person who is less flexible uh, is not flexible enough to get the job done when it comes to running? And that, that may or may not be the case. And so we actually have to look at what we need, where we need to be at in order to run without really any uh, limiting issues. And so I really want to talk about that. And that to me is what functional flexibility is. Are you, func are you flexible enough to do the job at hand? And that's, that's really where we, want to, where we want to go with this. Um, with that said, runners do have, have problem areas. Like you, you, I can point to hip flexors glutes and hamstrings and uh, Achilles tendon slash calf issues. Those are going to be the, most of the time runners three biggest hangups. And I feel like from there, a lot of things stem like uh, form, form issues arise, injury issues arise, combination of those things occur. Um, and then that can even lead to issues maybe in the low back, um, shoulder tightness, things like that, that, that you might not even think are related to a tight Achilles tendon or a tight plantar fascia. So um, a lot of times the problems stem from those, those three areas. So we'll be hitting on those pretty hard today. Um, but the tests we're going to show you are simple. You can do them on your own. Um, a couple of them are, are better if you can have somebody filming you. Um, but for the most part, it's like you don't you don't have to go initially spend a large amount of money on gait analysis and being evaluated. You know, you can get a good idea by doing these things yourself. You just need to know what you're looking for. And uh, I'm going to show you a bunch of stuff from uh, a guy named Jay Deshari. Uh, he's got he's got books out. Uh, he writes for Running Times. I've heard him speak a few times in presentations, and uh, he's got some really good ideas, especially for the, the self-help people. So if you really want to get into that, 
Um, I would look at his book, I believe it's Anatomy for Runners. Uh, I don't have a copy with me right this right this second. I think my wife actually has it. So I'm looking at my bookshelf. I do not see it. But uh, it's Jay Deshari. Um, I believe I talked about him later on. And uh, the, the book is Anatomy for Runners. a really good resource for um, for, for coaches and for athletes trying to, to figure some things out on their own. Uh, trust me, I know you can – running injuries are tough because a lot of times people will take a, a textbook look at them and, and it may or may not be your case. So, but, uh, but anyway, check that book out. And this is where this all stems from. So uh, these tests are in his book. He actually has more that he shows you in his book. So – uh, again, if you're interested, uh, I would check that book out, Anatomy for, for Runners, uh, Jay Deshari. Okay, and apparently I got ahead of myself. So, uh, Jay Deshari again, I'm not going to go into it. But uh, uh, the first test is the dorsiflexion of the ankle. So ankle dors dorsiflexion. Uh, dorsiflexion is when the top of the foot in the front of the shin is flexed. So the toes are pointing up towards the ceiling. Uh, this can be from you actively flexing your foot towards the sky or from flexion during, uh, from when you're, basically when your foot lands on the ground and the, and the shin leans forward, uh, that, is, that is essentially dorsiflexion. So uh, as, you can, as you might imagine, uh, having that flexion is important. So if we can't flex enough, it means we hit, we're not really helping the body cushion itself, right? So... Uh, if it's a very stiff, then the ankle joint is really inflexible. You're looking at potentially, um, you know, landing issues and, and impact forces creating injury breakdown um, and just poor form. It's going to be run, let, your, your running economy is going to be less. You're not going to be as efficient. So essentially, you're slowing yourself down um, by by not being able to absorb forces, but also because when that if that joint is really inflexible. What happens is you can't tow off, or when you tow off, um, the actual stride of your, the length of your stride is shorter because of that, because of that inflexibility. Having a flexible um, ankle joint means better propulsion in a longer stride um, without overstriding, if that makes sense. You don't want to be overstriding to get a long stride. You want it to be a natural stride, but in order for that to happen, the ankle joint has to be. Uh, mobile enough. So that's why we're testing this. That's why it's important. Uh, in order to do so, you see here, sit in a chair with a knee and ankle flex to a 90 degree angle. So basically, uh, you know, quads straight out and the uh, shin straight down. Then you want to slide forward in your chair so that the knees are just past the toes. So think about like when you squat, your, your knees coming down to the toe level. Here we're going just past the, the toes. Um, and if you cannot keep your heel on the ground, then your Achilles is too tight. And I tried this, uh, when I was writing this out and yeah, my Achilles, and I've known my Achilles have been tight for years and, and it's always been an, an issue for me. And that's something I'm always working on, but I couldn't get like, m especially my right heel just popped right up off the, off the ground. So, um, that to me, you know, that just solidifies that that Achilles is too tight and, it, and it's affecting my form, and I can I can feel it when when I'm running, especially the longer I run, the more that tends to break down, and and, and uh, my running economy suffers. So, um, but simple test, just note that down. Obviously, with all these things, we'll talk about how to do the practical application of te uh, of flexibility and strengthening all that stuff in a different discussion. So right now, you're just kind of making note of um, what is going on as you're doing these tests. Okay, and I planned this out pretty well, so uh, you'll just stay in that position to do the second test, the dorsiflexion of the big toe. Um, so where you ended up in, in test one with the heel down, um, go ahead and stay in that position, and then keeping the ball of the foot on the ground this time, try to raise that big toe to 30 degrees by keeping that toe straight. Um, and so what you're essentially doing is your planner's already stretched on one end because uh, it's at the heel, and so the Achilles is stretched. Now the uh, plantar fascia is stretched, and then trying to raise that um, toe up to 30 degrees is going to stretch that plantar uh, the rest of the way. And if you can't, or if the ball of your foot has to come up, 
then that means that your plantar fascia is too tight. And so this all leads, these are all kind of connected. Like the plantar fascia, if that's tight, then that can lead to a tight Achilles. Um, not being able to raise your toe like that. Think about where you're at when your foot is on the ground and your heel starting to come up and then you're, and then you're towing off. All those things are putting incredible stress on that plantar fascia. So if it's super tight, what's this going to do? It's going to get inflamed. And then you get plantar, plantar fasciitis, which if you've ever had it, and many of you have, you know, it's very, it's very, very discomforting and it's very hard to get rid of. And so, um, so one, it, it can affect your form. It can affect your performance because you're losing some of that toe off, um, that lever action of the big toe, which is actually very, very important with propulsion. And so you really, you know, they really can set up a chain of, of events going on there. So it could go from big toe to plantar to Achilles. They're all, you know, essentially connected by that plantar fascia. And if that gets messed up, then you can start messing up a lot of other things that can lead up to, you know, all the way up the leg into the hips and things like that. So again, a very, very important test. So 30 degrees, and there's an angle there just to kind of show you what that is. So it's not an incredible amount, but it's, it's enough to um, make you aware of, uh, of a stretch that's going on. Okay, and so we've done the ankle foot type of, of test, so we can move on to the hips and uh, see where we're at with that. So you can avoid the chair now, um, but uh, hip extension, uh, a lot of you can guess that the, you know, when the foot, you know, so when the foot is coming back um, in the gait cycle, so one foot's on the ground, the other foot is off the ground and swinging backwards. That is hip extension. So you're feeling the stretch in the front of the hip and the hip flexors. Um, I don't know, that's confusing. I just said extension and flexion in the same sentence. So the extension is coming from that hip moving backwards behind you. So you can you can essentially think of this as two actions. One, the, the, the muscles in the front of the hip stretching out and allowing that extension to happen and the contraction of the hamstrings and the glutes that are kind of that are pulling it backwards and so those are the two big actions in, in hip extension and then when you go to hip flexion it's the other way around the glutes and the hamstrings are essentially stretching and the hip flexor muscles in the front of the hips are lifting the leg okay so we want to worry about hip extension now so kneel down on one um before i get ahead of myself um uh, the only thing I had other, okay, so the only thing I should mention is that, you know, much like the ankle dors dorsiflexion, if this is limited, if that hip extension is limited, then you are limiting limiting the natural length of your stride. And so we talk about that all the time. We talk about having a longer stride um, that's going to help us cover more ground in the air, uh, and that's going to make us faster. And you see when people try to get that longer stride, they typically do it because they're overstriding, meaning they're basically throwing their foot out in front of their body letting it crash way out in front of their, their center of gravity and just creating all kinds of problems. So this will actually allow you to have a longer stride and still allow that foot to land, you know, just in front of the center of gravity or underneath the center of gravity. And that's what you're looking for. That's what's going to be mostly more beneficial. It's going to be more, uh, it's going to help you avoid injury, things like that. So that's, that's how you're looking to increase your stride length. So kneel down on one leg. Uh, on one knee, preferably inside a door jam, um, or if you have like a, a wall that just ends with with a big a big space in there, um, something that where you can put your back up against. Um, you want to be in a position so that while one knee is down, the femur of the kneeled leg is vertical, and it, as is the tibia of the opposite leg. So like it's when you know a football coach says take a knee, that type of thing. Then you want the you just want your uh, back straight. Um, you will have a natural curve in your low back, um, and that's normal. That's what you want, right? If you don't, um, you may be trying too hard, or you're already in the end position of where we want to be at. But anyway, up against that door jam, you want to have your back, and you want to be able to have your natural curve, have some space between your back and the wall. You want to be able to tilt your pelvis back and flatten it against the door jam. If you do not feel a stretch when you do that, and I'm talking about in in the hip hip flexors or the muscles in front of the hips, then you're good. You don't need to you don't need to worry about it. You're, you're flexible enough to go running. If you do feel a stretch, uh, and I definitely do, 
um, then you need to think about increasing the flexibility of your hip flexors and we'll talk about that at another time but this again just making kind of notes of of where you're at so but again an easy test uh, to see if you're flexible enough to to be running and, and if not I mean this can be a big limiter in performance because it just that shortened stride just means you're gonna be landing more and it means you're just gonna be less economical over the longer you run so you know for a 5k it might not really matter that much but for a, a marathon it, it, it can make a huge difference in, in conserving energy and just being efficient and things like that and not breaking down in training and, and all those things. Okay, now so moving away from uh, the hip extension aspect, we're going to start looking at the opposite side or um, when you're doing hip flexion. So obviously, you know, we, I'm just thinking every time I go in the doctor and they're like, they try to raise my leg up and they're like, oh, you're so inflexible and all this and that. But no, I can't. I can't lift my leg to my toes or to my nose. Uh, that just doesn't happen. So, um, and I know a lot of you are in the same case, but some of you are incredibly flexible as well. Um, the thing is, does what do you need for running? And what's, what's going to determine if you need to work on your flexibility or not on that aspect? So quick test here for hamstring uh, flexibility. Lie on your back with one leg straight on the floor. Um, flex the other leg so you can interlock your fingers behind your knee. And then straighten that knee of the bent leg. So I'm envisioning, so I'm laying on my back, my left leg straight. I got my hands behind my right leg. I'm going to then straighten my right leg out and pull my leg towards the ceiling. Um, if I can get it to 70 degrees, I'm good. If I can't, then I probably need some work. So you can see there between the two angles, like. You know, like every time I go to the doctor, I feel like they're trying to get me past 90 degrees. Um, in this test, you know, we're looking at getting to 70 degrees, which is significantly less, um, but not necessarily less as difficult as uh, it might be for some people. Um, the only thing else, um, you know, like when we talked about with the hip extension, why having that length is important, you know, the opposite is the same as for the hamstring when you're trying to drive that hip during, um, so if your left leg's towing off and your right leg's um, going through the air and you're, you're driving, you need that leg drive and that ability for the um, leg to be lifted so that you can allow for a better stride, you can allow for a longer natural stride. All these things go hand in hand. So, so really that'll take care of your major issues. You notice we hit the quads or the hip flexors and the quads to see how, how flexible they were. We hit the hamstrings to see how they flexible they were. And we hit your ankle joint to see how flexible that was. So those are the three main areas we're looking at when we're running. And from that, I think we can stem away from anything else that might occur. But the majority of issues people get are with those three things. Now we have three tests left. And they're essentially more strength related or stability, general strength um, related. But it's, I don't think it, it's, I don't think it needs its own discussion because I think that as you're looking at this, hopefully you'll see how being flexible and strong are what's going to be the key factors in improving your form without even getting a form analysis. And you'll be able to tell so much like, oh yeah, my hamstring, I can only get to 40 degrees. My, I can't, you know, I can't, I can't even flatten my back against the wall or, you know, my, my heels coming up, my Achilles are so tight, you know, all those things you're saying, okay, I'm, I'm weak, I'm inflexible, you know, that's probably a big reason why I'm getting hurt. And, you know, we can talk about, we'll talk about form in another discussion, but, you know, you start thinking about, okay, you start thinking how related these things are. And okay, so, you know, if this is going on, then no wonder my form is off here, you know, whatever the case may be. So. Um, this is all this is all related between the flexibility and the strength aspect. I think it's really it's really important for what I really want to get to in another discussion, and that's assessing if your form is really needs to be fixed. And this is basically step one of of realizing what is and what isn't with your form. So anyway, the squat test. Uh, this is one where you might want to have a partner, uh, or if you have one of those sweet little you know camera um, 
smartphone holders like for a tripod or something use that and then just look at the data after you're done or just look in a mirror and make some mental notes but uh, you want to be able to review some of this um, to make sure you're catching everything so at a right angle to your to your partner camera or mirror um, place your hands on your hips and perform five squats you want to go down um, as deep as you can you know you know getting your butt to the to the ground um, and just kind of you're really just kind of seeing what is happening how you're able to get into that position so essentially what we're looking at is in your shins um, if your tibia is leaning forward so like when you hear don't ever cross your your knees over your toes when you're doing a squat well sometimes we do that because we're compensating for something else so if we're leaning forward a lot in that and with our with our tibia uh, it really means that your quads are dominating the movement, and that's not what we want. And but that's okay. I mean, most people, there's a lot of people that like, you know, that's the only way they can even get into that position. And that's why we're doing this test is so we can figure that out and work on the other on the other stuff that's going to fix this. Um, if it, if your tibia uh, remains vertical, then your your booty, your your bottom is doing the work, and that's what we want. We want the glutes and the hamstrings to be doing that work, being able to allow the uh, squat to go basically essentially straight down um, and able to almost basically sit up on yourself and uh, that's that's really what we're looking for like you can see in this picture this 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 lady is you can tell her her knees are way over her um, her toes and you can tell that her quads are really doing most of the work and you can tell on the angle picture like you can tell she got a big arch in her back too so um, you know that's not essentially a good a good thing but I wanted to put that on there because that's I mean that's how a lot of people look when they're when they're doing a squat um, uh, just seeing if I have anything else in here and that's it so that's really what kind of we're looking at and that's just gonna basically show us if our glutes and hamstrings are you know quote-unquote firing um, which I don't necessarily like that term but uh, uh, if they're doing majority of the work, which, which is what we want, and that's what you want with running, because you want that you want that uh, that butt and that hamstring to be doing to be to be strong to allow you to push forward, to try to pull back and and drive forward. And so, if they're not, which I've seen a lot of runners and even a lot of pretty fast runners, uh, it's a good source of improving your power, improving your economy. Um, and really just making you a faster runner um, just by making your glutes and your hamstrings stronger. In the sixth test, the bridge is really, it's a lot like what we're talking about. It's a good complement to the squat test. Um, you know, you might be thinking it's essentially the same test. And it, it is, but uh, I like to do both because um, the the first the first test is going to show us some flexibility things in that hamstring issue as well, um, and and I can get a little bit different view on the the bridge test, so um, can really make sure that we're doing things right. And if you really want to and you're not sure about the squat test, the bridge test might be a better thing to just go with and you'll be fine. Um, so the, how you do it? Lie on your back, both legs bent, so feet are flat on the floor. Um, you'll probably have about a 90 degree angle between the ankle inside of the knee and the top of your hip. Um, and then you want to lift your backside up off the, off the ground. Um, you essentially want a straight line from going all down your chest, uh, in front of your pelvis, and then to, the, to your knees. You want, you want a straight line. Um, so hold that for 30 seconds and just kind of make mental notes of what's doing the work. Is my back doing the work? Is, am, I feeling the, if I'm, am I feeling it in the glutes, the hamstrings? Where am I feeling the work? Um, then what you can do is you can raise one leg off the floor uh, for a few inches and uh, see what's going on to you. See if you see any drooping to one side, um, if you kind of lose your balance, things like that. And then hold that for a few seconds um, you then switch legs. So put the other leg down and then raise the other the leg you had on the floor. Um, so what we're looking for here, again, is that you shouldn't feel tightness in the back. If you are, that means your back is doing the work, and that's not what you want. You want your you want to feel like your glutes and your hamstrings are doing the work, um, and that's <clears throat> that's important here. 
Uh, and then if you see any drooping or shifting in your pelvis when you do the one-legged bridge, um, that's showing you uh, what side is is generally weak, and uh, you know what if your glutes are weak in general, and if your hamstrings are weak, or if your core in general is is weak. So it can tell you a little bit more, on, especially with the core. Um, you know, you should be able to be, keep a straight line. If not, core is probably weak. It can't it can't maintain that contraction. Um, so it could be, you know, it can tell you if your core is a little weak, and it can tell you if your glutes are uh, not doing the work for that test. So, um, but think about those. Those are kind of the, essentially the position you're in when you're running. You're landing, so one leg is going to be straight out, one leg is going to be bent, and, and and so that's why this is a good mimic of how you are running. Okay, so and then we can move on to our next test. And our t next test is the one-legged squat. So uh, you can here's you can get a lot of information. So you're really looking at you, essentially between the three of these tests, you're looking at overlapping issues. You're getting one from you know one test and a little bit of another another issue from that same test, and then the next test kind of picks up where that left off, and then it picks up a little bit more information. So, but overall, you're going to get a, a complete picture of where you're at with this. Um, Again, this is one where you'd want to maybe have a camera uh, film it or somebody filming it for you. Uh, might be easier. But what essentially what you're going to do is get in the same squat position you were and then uh, for the for the regular squat and then just do a one-legged squat instead. So just pull that pull one of the feet off the ground. Do six six single leg squats. Um, and you should be doing that actually for both both legs. So when you're doing this, this is actually times two on this on this test, just this test here. Um, and what you're looking for is loss of foot contact. So like um, if you're standing on your right leg, does that right leg kind of want to, like do you shift your weight on it at all and that maybe your heel comes up or the side, the inside of the foot comes up. Um, you're looking for trunk shift. You lean over to maintain your balance. Does, if I'm on that right leg, does my pelvis drop on the left side? And does my knee, does my right, if I'm on that right leg again, does that right knee buckle into the inside of the top foot? So is there a nice little buckling of that, that knee? Um, do my hands come off the hips to maintain my balance? And then in just in general, lose a balance. So you can see if you do any of these things, what, what it means on the other side here. So um, lost foot contact, foot, it means you have a foot stability issue, which could be a plantar issue, Achilles issue, things like that. Uh, you know, things we've talked about, trunk shift, hip or foot instability. Um, so that, you know, we're really talking, so for all this, we're really talking about is our core weak? Um, and that's that's where all this is going to, going to lead you to. Um, how strong is my core? And that's what you're going to be able to find out from, from doing this. So uh, on this, the, you know, so how do you, how do we use this is, is really the next big thing we, we talk about. You know, so by doing these tests, we're obviously di identifying potential issues, but to me it also is a time saver in the long run because now you have a plan of what needs to be focused on. Does my hamstrings need to be focused on? Do my shins need to, or my Achilles need to be focused on? You can really dial in where you need to put most of your efforts. So, you, you know, like, oh, I, I don't have time to stretch. Well, now you're more likely to make time to stretch at least your hamstrings if they're tight or whatever the problem issue is because you know uh, you know that they're not where they need to be and so you know if I'm gonna if I'm gonna take five minutes I'm gonna spend it on the one issue that I know needs work um, so I think it can really just give you a, a focused plan on what you're what you're going to do and then uh, you know I cut a lot of the slide original slide off so there's still some remnants here but um, eventually, so what we would want to do is we'd want to look at our flexibility, but we'd look at the strength too. And uh, we have some presentations on those already, and uh, we'll get those linked up. Um, so, but the thing is, it just makes it, it makes it so nice to um, get an idea. And to me, you do this, and then you can really kind of take a look at your form, and then we'll have to do it in a different discussion. But uh, from there, you can say, you know, this is what, you know, a lot of you look at Garmin data, and you're like, oh, my stride rate is low. Um, you know, I'm getting injured here all the time. This can start pulling back some layers in there and be like, ah, okay, this is why, this is why this is, and this is why that is, is causing the injury. You know, you can start figuring some things out for yourself here, and that's really what we want to 
get at with all of this. Uh, so with that, I mean, you know, we've done discussions on, on strength and flexibility, and we'll have to make sure we link these up to them. But, uh, um, yeah, I think, this is a, I think this is a great place to start. You know, if you don't do any of the other stuff we talk about, um, you know, the first two assessments we do, like, that to me, that's okay. Um, but this one is really, I, th I feel like, really beneficial for you because um, even if you're an advanced runner, I think doing, if you've never done anything like this and you're just kind of taking that assessment of where you're at with things, then it's easy to brush off, like, not doing core work. It's easy to brush off not stretching and things like that. But, um, you know, knowing if you're like, oh, my gosh, I could – I could be more economical. I could save energy. I, it's going to make me faster if I just got my, my hamstrings in check, you know. So uh, it's it's something I think we should all we should all take part in. And honestly, when I did I did it when I was when I was writing this up, and I was like, holy cow, I have so much work to do. No wonder, no wonder I feel so so rough in the mornings. Um, so it, it's actually given me a new kind of hope. It's like, you know, I've run 75, 80,000 miles in my career. And I can't just keep running more mileage. I've got to figure out what what am I going to do to maintain a high level. Well, boom, there it is. There's an instant thing I can focus on that's going to revitalize certain aspects of, of running. And it's actually going to help me maintain a high level for a lot longer. So so with that, I'll quit rambling. Uh, hopefully you can take this t these tests and use them for, for yourself and figure some stuff out for yourself. And uh, I'll make sure I get those other presentations linked up. And then uh, the next time I want to talk about uh, um, some things with form and doing kind of a self-form analysis um, and then using all of this, kind of tying all of this in together with, uh, with the strength and flexibility. So thanks for listening, and I will uh, talk to you later.